Get ready to get some of your glaze questions answered. Hi, Marie here with another informative video for you. Are you sometimes confused or even intimidated by the thought of glazing your pottery? Well, today I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge 21 glaze questions from you, my viewers. Follow along as I answer these questions to help you understand pottery glaze a bit more. Just like my other 21 questions answered videos, these questions I've received from my viewers here on this channel and from Pottery Crafters website. All the supplies and links for more information are listed for you in the show notes below. There are 21 questions in this video, so if you feel like jumping around the video for a specific answer, there are timestamps down below in the description. Okay, let's get started. The first question is from Renee. What is glaze made of? Glaze is made up of three basic minerals, silica, alumina, and flux. Silica, or quartz, forms glass. Alumina stiffens the glaze, helping to make it less runny and more durable. The main sources of alumina are kaolin and ball clay. Fluxes are minerals like feldspar, boron, and soda ash, just to name a few. These fluxes lower the melting temperature of the silica, alumina, and other heat-resistant materials in the glaze, helping them to fuse together. Glaze can also include other additives such as bentonite to keep the glaze particles suspended in water. Colorants like oxides that can withstand high temperature and other modifiers to change the texture or finish of the glaze. This one's from Brittany. Are all glazes food safe? When thinking of glaze, you think of a glass-like film formed over your pottery, so it would seem that all glazes would be food safe, but they're not. Because of all the different ingredients in glaze recipes, not all of them are made to be food safe. It's important to always read the labels and make sure that it will indicate that it's food safe or dinnerware safe. Sarah asked, can you mix glazes together? Yes, many glazes are mixable. Just make sure that they're the same firing temperature. And keep in mind that there are food safe glazes and non-food safe. It's always best to test your glazes. Janet wants to know, how do you get your glaze to flow down the pottery to make that dripping effect? There are three different ways that I know of. Different glazes produce different effects. First, read the labels. They will indicate if the glaze flows or floats, and it'll say creates, separates, breaks, words like that. Then you know your glaze is going to flow down your pottery. Second, if it's not flowing, raise the firing temperature from cone 5 to cone 6. That would be 2,167 degrees to 2,232 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,186 degrees to 1,222 degrees Celsius. The third is to apply flux. I found this flux by Mako works pretty good. A little goes a long way. Jeffrey asks, can you glaze the bottom of your pottery? Yes, you can glaze the bottom by using ceramic kiln stilts, like these. And they come in different sizes and shapes. This one was fired with the ceramic kiln stilts. Or you can apply wax resist to the rim and flip it upside down. To learn more about glazing the bottom, I have a post on my Pottery Crafters website. I left a link for you in the show notes below. Pamela wants to know, why do I keep getting pinholes? That's a good one. Pinholes are one of the most common problems potters run into. They're caused by gases being released under the glaze and not healing properly. There are four things I know of that beginner potters can do to help prevent this. 
you can use a cleaner clay with less organic minerals, raise your bisque firing, but not past cone 04. That would be 1,945 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,063 degrees Celsius. You can also fire your kiln at a slower rate. Or you can fire to cone 5, 2,167 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,186 degrees Celsius. Then put a 20 minute hold at the end. This is equal to firing to cone 6. Firing to cone 6 like this gives your glaze time to heal. Kate asks, I have problems with my glaze crazing. Can you give me any suggestions? Crazing is mainly caused by glaze not fitting to the clay body. They need to expand and contract together in the kiln. You can try changing either the clay or the glaze, or you can increase the firing temperature and slow the rate of cooling in your kiln. I would also suggest not opening the kiln until it's under 100 degrees. I know that's hard. I always wait until I can pick my pieces up with my bare hands. This one is from Sophia. Which way is better to mix your glaze, blending or shaking? Follow what any label says. Most commercial glazes say shake well. I myself like using the handheld blender to mix my glaze. It's handy and mixes well. Plus I don't get glaze on my cap which keeps the top area cleaner, giving you a tighter seal. Both ways work well, as long as you mix your glaze well. Mary Jean wants to know, when I apply more than one coat of glaze, how long do I have to wait until I apply the next coat? After the first coat is applied, once it's dry to the touch, you can apply the next coat. I've applied the next coat hours after the first one with no problem. When you wait a day or longer, that's when you can run into problems. Depending on the glaze, you can run the risk of the glaze flaking off in the kiln. The next one's from Barbara. I see potters wear gloves and others don't. Is glaze bad for your skin? The reason some potters wear gloves is to keep the resist spots off their pottery, such as oils on their hands, or they don't want the glaze on their hands. I've had a few bare spots on my pottery because I touched my bisque ware and lotion was still on my hands. So now I always wear gloves when I glaze. Plus the glaze can dry out my hands. The minerals are not water soluble so they can't absorb into your skin. So unless you have an open cut or you're sensitive to some minerals like nickel or soda ash, you should be fine. This one is from Lisa. Does glaze go bad? There is no expiration date on glazes, and for the most part, they don't go bad. Glazes can go bad if they get contaminated with unwanted particles that may get into your glaze. If it's been sitting around for a while and dried out, you can bring it back to life with some water and even add a little glaze thinner and mix it really well. To read more about recycling your glaze, you can read Properly Disposing and Recycling Glaze. I left a link for you down below. This one's from Ruth. What's the difference between underglaze and glaze? Underglaze is what it says it is. It's used to decorate underneath your glaze. You can apply underglaze to both greenware and bisqueware. Because underglaze is mainly clay and colorant with a little bit of frit, it doesn't contain enough silica to form a glass-like finish on your pottery, so you'll have to apply glaze. Glaze is mainly applied to bisque ware and does form a glass-like finish over your pottery. If you're getting any value from this video, you can hit the like button at any time during the video. John wants to know, is it better to buy glazes or make your own glaze recipes? Buying commercial glazes is best for beginner potters until you become familiar with the mixing of glazes. Mixing your own glazes allows you to make adjustments and get the results that you desire, but it comes with practice and trial and error. Making your own glazes is more cost efficient, but more time consuming. It's easier to mix dry glaze or open a bottle, mix well, and apply. Maya wants to know, can glaze and underglaze be mixed? Underglazes have a different composition than glazes. Underglazes contain minerals that make it more adhesive, so it sticks to the clay surface in a particular area, 
while glazes are less adhesive and tend to flow more. Both minerals contain different ingredients that might not get along well in the kiln. If you'd like to read more about mixing underglaze and glaze together, I left a link for you below. The next question is from James. I hear flocculated and deflocculated glaze. It's confusing. Can you explain? Flocculated glaze is when the particles flock together, thickening the glaze. Bentonite and gums like CMC thicken and suspend the glaze. Deflocculating is when the particles separate from each other, thinning the glaze. You can add minerals such as sodium silicate to your glaze or a glaze thinner so you don't water the glaze down too much. Adding a little glaze thinner also helps when spraying glaze. All you need are a few drops. Stephen asks, can you reglaze pottery? Yes, you can. Some potters apply hairspray and some use sandpaper to create a rough surface for their glaze to stick to. Keep in mind the glaze takes much longer to dry because the pottery is no longer porous. For more detailed information, you can check out my post on reglazing. I left the link for you below. This one is from Margaret. I'm a bit confused about which type of brush to use, natural hair or synthetic brushes. Good question. There are potters that like using synthetic brushes. However, natural hair brushes are recommended. You have much larger particles suspended with water, making it very different from particles suspended with acrylic paint. The natural hairs hold and release the large particles onto the ceramic, which is different from paper and canvas. Natural fibers are found to release the glaze particles better. I also have a selection of brushes for you to check out. I left a link for you below. Virginia wants to know, how do you stop glaze streaking on your pottery? When applying your glaze, make sure you get three nice, thick, even coats and change the direction of your brush strokes after each coat. Chris asks, should I apply underglaze to my greenware or bisqueware? You can apply underglaze to both greenware and bisqueware. I found for the most part that applying underglaze to bisqueware is better because it's not as fragile to work with and you don't have to take up extra space in the kiln when bisque firing because the underglaze piece can't touch any greenware. However, you do have to be careful not to smudge your underglaze when applying glaze over it. This one's from Kelly. Will underglaze melt onto the kiln shelf? In general, underglaze doesn't stick to the kiln shelf because it's mainly made up of clay and colorant. It doesn't have enough frit, which is silica and fluxes, to stick to the shelf. But because of the frit in the underglaze, it might stick if you apply it too thick. Applying wax resist over the underglaze keeps the pattern on the bottom so you can wipe off the glaze on the foot without removing the underglaze. Jake asks, can you brush and dip glaze on the same piece? Yes, you can dip your glaze first and give it a nice base coat, then brush glaze to create some cool patterns. It's always best to test fire first. Remember, for more detailed information and glaze tips, I left links for you in the show notes below. I hope I've helped you in answering some of the basic glaze questions. Please give this video a thumbs up. And to see more videos like this in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note for me below. That's all I have for you today. I hope to see you in the next video. And as always, let's stay dirty.